Good evening, everybody. It's great to see everybody. I have a couple of quick reminders before we get started today. The first one is I want to remind everybody to wear their mask properly. Keep your nose and mouth covered. As we remind the students every day, your nose and mouth are connected to your lungs, uh, unless there's something about your genes that we don't know. Uh, and finally, following the present program tonight, there will be photos taken in the front foyer by door one in front of the display cases. So don't run out. Uh, make sure you take some time to get your picture taken with your honored educator this evening. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's celebration of our 2021 academic top 15 seniors and their most influential educators. You will notice that we are actually celebrating 16 students this year as we have two of the students who are tied in their class rankings. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to thank Mrs. Darby O'Brien, our auditorium director, and her son Brody for the setup of the auditorium and for operating our audio visual equipment. All of these roles behind the scenes, they are very much appreciated and an important part of our program tonight. I'd also like to thank Mrs. Miles for putting the entire program together. Each year during this celebration, we recognize and induct distinguished alumni into our Alumni Hall of Fame. However, we will not be having alumni inductions at our program tonight due to safety precautions and concerns related to COVID. It is our hope that if, if and when things return to some type of normal, uh, we will be able to continue this tradition next year. To begin tonight's program, I would like to ask Alexander Weifenbach and Mr. Carl Teague to come on up to the stage. Alexander is the son of Paula and Keith Weifenbach. He is a member of the National Junior Honors Program, enjoys working at his job at Walmart and playing Minecraft in his spare time. He plans to attend the International Business College this fall to major in computer programming. Bram, computer programming. Alexander is honoring his business teacher, Mr. Carl T. All right. How does this work? I know how to do this. Pop up. All right. Going first. That's always, as I, a lot of you know me for what I am and going first. That's, that's, always, that's always fun. Yeah. Uh, I would like to personally honor uh, Mr. Carl Teague as my most influential educator. Where would I be without his guidance? Like, I would be directionless, foolish, unsure about anything. I look back to a point in my life in freshman year where my path just turned down to a path of greatness. Mr. Teague, after completing a, per a really good project, I did really good, uh, he, he singled me out and said, you did a good job. That's, that's stuck with me. After, after all four years of high school, I just really stuck with me. Uh, this was in my uh, preparation for our college and careers class, and it's just great. I'm, I'm nothing special. I'm going to college, going to further my career in education, and but it, it just really stuck with me how he actually cared. <laughs> He, he was the first teacher, freshman year of high school, to, a, a, to single me out and point to me, saying, good job. And I'd like to thank him for that. Thank you. Sorry, I think we're going to be doing that all night long. Uh, I would now like to have Mr. Mike Birdsall and Macy Barker join me on stage. Macy is the daughter of Alan and Michelle Barker. She is the youngest of three siblings, Madison, Allison, and Bailey. And she is an aunt to her youngest best friend, Vera. She enjoys reading, drawing, playing softball, hiking, and spending time with her family. 
She has been a member of youth group and a Sunday school teacher at her church. She is currently coaching an under eight rec league softball team. She is a member of the Art Club, Rotary Interact, National Honor Society, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Student Council, and the Academic Super Bowl team. She has performed in several theater shows here at DCHS and in the Hendricks Community Theater, earning her induction into the International Thespian Society. She is currently the social media manager for this year's post-prom committee and president of the art club. Macy plans to attend DePaul University this fall, major in psychology and major in psychology. She is honoring her science teacher, Mr. Mike Birdsell. scariest teacher you'll have freshman year. <laughs> These were the first words many of us heard about Mr. Birdsall going into high school. But for me, he's been anything but scary. Now Mr. Birdsall is many things. He is a desertitarian, a bird watcher, an inspirer, a leader, a fun teacher, the most competitive person I have ever met, and much more. But most importantly, he is a Christian. From growing plants in VBS to attending FCA to the most fun I've ever had at youth group, he has continuously he has continuously inspired me to be the best version of myself and pushed me to inspire others in the same way. He has been a tutor, a teacher, a mentor, and a friend to me, which I will always be grateful for. Whether it was studying biology before youth group or reassuring me things would be fine when I was struggling with my personal life, Mr. Birdsall was always a rock for me and his classroom was sanctuary from daily stress. Except for test days, of course. Then I wanted to run in the other direction. There's so much I can say about this man and how he has influenced my life. But through his actions, I'm sure you can see for yourself just how amazing he is. The smallest things like hiking and seeing a mushroom, recognizing anatomical terms of the doctor, or pointing out the wildflowers we, were, we learned in class make me think of him and smile. More importantly, I will remember the life lessons he has taught me. One of Mr. Birdsall's favorite things is to make us list our BBCs, our beefs, blessings, and callings in life at that moment. So I'll leave you with this one last time. My beef is having to leave your classroom and your daily sarcasm and music. My blessing is that this bittersweet year, I got to be in your class every day in person. And my calling today is to honor you at this ceremony. Thank you for all you do, Mr. Birdsall. Mr. Birch also does a great job following directions. Uh, at this time, I'd like to have Hallie Jackson come forward. Hallie has also chosen to honor Mr. Birdsall. Hallie is the daughter of Mike and Heather Jackson. Her siblings include Elida, Lily, and Lucy Jackson. Hallie enjoys riding her horse, Lacey, re reading, thrift shopping, and spending time with her friends. Hallie is, an act, is active in 4-H, and she has been an active member of National Honor Society, volunteering for different community activities, such as the Food Bank and the Maple Festival. She is also a member of Rotary and 4-H. Hallie has been successful in rehabilitating several different animals, and she has a passion for animal welfare. Hallie plans to attend Purdue University in the fall and major in conservation biology. Thank you, Macy, for making it hard to follow you on this, but um, I'm honoring Mr. Birdsall as my most influential educator. Um, my freshman year, I had also heard of the infamous Birdsall and his annual breaking in of the freshmen. We sat, my class sat in the biology room, nervously chatting to each other, but when he lumbered on in, we all hushed quickly. He looked at us, raised his eyebrows, and said, why do none of you have a worksheet? And we looked at him, all of us a little afraid to tell him, and he pointed to his whiteboard and said, there. In the very corner, it said in tiny letters, WSBT. Worksheet, back table. I might have been afraid of Mr. Birdsall if he hadn't already been coached me in the girls' soccer team. All the girls affectionately called him Birdie, and he yelled at me to quit being afraid of the ball, which I was. On super cold days, he brought a huge pile of coats 
and pass them out to all the girls who were shivering. His bark turned out to be worse than his bite, and his class was a real treat, fascinating and endlessly entertaining. When we dissected frogs and pigs and I started crying, he walked over to me, gave me a hug, and then handed me a scalpel. I have never had a teacher push me so hard. Mr. Bredsall expected the best for me at all times, no matter that all three of his classes are the hardest that I had ever taken. When I'd complain, he'd spread his arms and say, that's life, or that's college. When I did well, he drew smiley faces on my papers. He's stubborn and wonderful, and the best teacher I've ever had, and the only time, and the only one who has ever pushed me so hard, and the only time I've been determined to keep an A in a class. I steal food from his back room, but try to replace it, and when I don't pay attention in class, he throws markers at me, or tiny soccer balls. My junior year, I went to Molecular Medicine in Action Conference by his recommendation, and when I got sick, and all the other adults asked if I, if I was okay, if I needed to return to the hotel room, he shook his head and laughed and said, of course she's fine, get back in there, and winked at me. Mr. Birdsall has not only been influential as a teacher, but also as a person. I consider him to be a real friend. Thank you, Mr. Birdsall, for being the teacher that made my high school ex experience special, for pushing me toward a career in STEM, and not only that, but of course, in biology. Thank you for being the teacher in my stories, and someone who believes in my, inte in my intellectual capabilities, for pushing me when I didn't want to be pushed, and being there for me when I needed you. I love you, and I'm so sad to leave your class for the last time. At this time, I would like to introduce to you Barbara Hensley and Dr. Jamie Calhoun. Ladies, if you would, please come forward. Barbara is the daughter of Jeff Hensley and Tammy Yeoman. She is the youngest of four children. She has two sisters, Josie and Kyanne, and one brother, Kaylin, all former graduates of Danville Community High School. She enjoys dancing, painting, reading, and spending time with her family. Barbara is very active in volunteering at Head Start, a local nonprofit preschool. She has been a member of the National Honor Society, academic team, French club, and color guard during high school. Barbara plans to attend Purdue University School of Liberal Arts in the, in the fall to major in criminology. Tonight, she is honoring her English 9 honors teacher, Dr. Jamie Calhoun. To me, a teacher that approaches each day as a new day with a positive outlook deserves to be recognized. A teacher who has a goal of changing their students' lives for the better deserves to be noticed. Today, I am honored to stand here and express my appreciation to my most influential educator, Dr. Calhoun. When I first stepped into her classroom my freshman year, I remember her being so enthusiastic and so welcoming. And I'm sure everyone who has ever had her as a teacher would agree with me on that. But there's so much more to Dr. Calhoun than her effectiveness as a teacher. I chose her as the most influential because of her heart. Even through the rough parts of high school, she made sure that each and every one of her students' mental health was still intact. I believe that everyone deserves a person that will be there for you when you're at your weakest. Even if she didn't know it at the time, Dr. Calhoun was that person for me. I will forever be thankful for her for all that she has done for me, not only as a student, but as a person as well. She's truly inspired me to be better and do better for the world. So thank you, Dr. Calhoun. Thank you for creating such a welcoming learning environment. Thank you for always pushing me to do better. And most of all, thank you for believing in me no matter what. Next, we will hear from Audrey O'Neill as she recognizes Mrs. Tina Campbell as her most influential educator. Audrey is the daughter of Scott and Amy O'Neill, and she has one sister, Olivia. She enjoys reading, playing soccer, and thrifting. Audrey has been a class officer for the student council all four years of high school. She has also been a member of the National Honor Society for the past two years and is the current president. Audrey was also a member of the girls' soccer team for three years and has been a member of Rotary Club for the past two years and volunteers her time for Shared Blessings Food Pantry. She has been accepted into the honors program at Anderson University where, where she will major in psychology and criminal justice. Audrey would like to honor her AP world history teacher, Mrs. Tina Campbell, as her most influential educator. I would 
like to honor Miss Tina Campbell as my most influential educator. Mrs. Campbell was my AP World History teacher sophomore year, and it was also her first year teaching at Danville. I would not call myself a history fan then, and I wouldn't call myself one now. However, Mrs. Campbell inspired a desire in me to learn that I had seldom experienced before. It was the only class that I looked forward to every day, and this was in large part due to Mrs. Campbell's eccentric teaching. Even the most boring subjects she made exciting, and I found that I could remember what I was learning as she captured my attention with every lesson, something that is impossible for most teachers to do with their students. On top of her amazing teaching, Mrs. Campbell genuinely cares about her students, and all of us could see that as she ensured that we all understood the material presented to us and often surprised us with donuts on especially hard days. We never needed to be embarrassed about speaking up in class or asking questions, assured by Mrs. Campbell that she was learning along with us. Thank you, Mrs. Campbell, for inspiring for me a passion for learning and being a positive force in my life. At this time, I'd like to have Melanie Futures and Mr. Brandon Gleason come to the stage. Melanie is the daughter of Steve Futures and Dawn and Fran Thurston. Her siblings include her younger sister, Holly, and older brothers, Garrett and Mitchell. For 11 years, she has worked to become a classically trained pianist. She has given many performances, accompaniments, and private lessons to local Danville kids, hoping to instill her passion for piano in them. She also enjoys playing on the Danville Varsity softball team and has been a player for all four years. Melanie has been active in her community by volunteering many hours at Shared Blessings Food Pantry and Angels Anonymous through National Honor Society. She has been a member of student council for all four years of high school and is currently the executive vice president. She has also been a member of Business Professionals of America, Spell Bowl, and has played varsity golf. She was selected as Danville's candidate for the Indiana Academic All-Stars. Melanie plans to attend Purdue University to study health sciences pre-medical occupation. Tonight, she is recognizing her seventh grade science teacher, Mr. Brandon Gleason, as her most influential educator. Standing here today, I would like to honor Mr. Brandon Gleason as my most influential educator. As my seventh grade teacher, he was the first to spark my interest in the field of science, which I do plan to continue studying into college. He not only taught the subject, but he engaged students, encouraged us to ask questions and be curious, not just memorize facts for a test. Every student he has encountered, I think we can all agree, has taken something meaningful away from his class classroom, whether it was science related or just simple life advice. His support extended beyond the classroom as well by attending sporting events and my piano performances throughout the years. Not only did he support me in my activities, he supported me through one of the toughest times of my life. In seventh grade, I suffered from an eating disorder and all of the emotions that come with that and anxiety of attending school on a daily basis. Mr. Gleason would always check on me, ease my apprehension, help me get through the day when all I wanted to do was go home. His classroom was the only place in the school where I felt safe and I could escape my own mind. With no hesitation, he always offers a helping hand, both academically and personally, as a great teacher and friend does. Thank you. Like all teachers, Mr. Gleason does a great job following directions. I would like to ask Aiden Sheeran to make his way up to the stage so he may also honor Mr. Gleason. Aiden is the son of Scott and Mickey Sheeran. He has four older siblings, Jordan, Keaton, Cameron, and Mariah. Maria, sorry. Aiden enjoys soccer, playing the piano and guitar, and hiking. He played on the Danville varsity soccer team all four years of high school and was the winner of the Heisman Award for the school. Aiden is an active member of the Westbridge Youth Group and regularly, regularly plays for the worship, their worship team. He also keeps busy working two jobs as a stalker at Menards and a pace assistant for the Danville Community School Corporation. In the fall, Aiden will be pursuing a major in design and construction integration 
at Purdue University with aspirations to become an architect. Aiden is also honoring his seventh grade science teacher, Mr. Brandon Gleason, as his best teacher. I have a little disclaimer. Uh, I turned this in three weeks late and wrote it in 30 minutes. So Dr. Calhoun, I apologize for any grammatical errors. Okay. So I'd like to thank all of my teachers at Danville Community School Corporation for a wonderful 12 years of my success. I would, like to, uh, I would like them to know I couldn't have done it. I could have done it on my own, but I'll admit they made it a whole lot easier. I've had some great teachers over the years that have made me work hard and truly earned my grade. I've also had some even better teachers who didn't give me homework and let me go on with my life. However, the title of best teacher is reserved for the one and only Mr. Gleason. Going into seventh grade, the previous science teacher, who my sister claimed to be the best teacher she had the whole year, had left to teach at another school. So I walked in that year thinking I had just missed out on the class of my life, but oh, was I wrong. That class ended up being the best class I've ever taken and I still learned something new. Don't worry, Mr. Glenn, you were a very close second, but Mr. Gleason let me ride his bike at the end of the year. At, at some point in the year, I remember building some small spaghetti towers in class that were intended to hold up a marshmallow on the top. Let's just say if the class average was a two-story building, ours was a small storage shed and it wasn't very sturdy. Um, but even after doing terribly in the experiment, it still piqued my interest, and now I'm going to the construction design integration at Purdue. Mr. Gleason is not only a great teacher, but also a great mentor, and someone who truly cares about his students. When I was in middle school, I used to take piano lessons at my aunt's house, and so did Melanie, and roughly once a semester, we would have piano recitals, which, if you didn't know, happened to be the most stressful things in the world, even more so than one of Mr. Birdsall's tests. But that's besides the point. Mr. Gleason would come and take the time out of his day to come and watch us play, even if we did pester him to do so. But I believe that he truly, that truly speaks to his character. Mr. Gleason is all that you'd want in a teacher. He is knowledgeable, exciting, understanding, dedicated. I mean, I could go on for days. I cherish all the fun times and great memories from that class, and thank you for being such a great influence in my life. Well, it's, it is my pleasure to welcome back Mr. Jim Glenn from retirement uh, and invite him to come on up on the stage with his student, Lindy Spence. Lindy is the daughter of Matt and Carrie Spence. She enjoys spending time reading, riding her horse named Six, and spending time with her friends. She is a 10-year 4-H member and, a ve and very active in the Horse and Pony Club, where she volunteers her time in addition to helping out the local food pantry and assisting the parks department. She has been a member of student council, national honor society, and academic team all four years of high school. She is attending Purdue University in the fall and starting out in exploratory studies. She asked Mr. Glenn to step out of his retirement and comfortable living this evening to just long enough for her to honor him as her most influential educator. I would like to honor Mr. Glenn as my most influential educator. I had the privilege of having Mr. Glenn for chemistry my sophomore and junior years. I always look forward to his class, not necessarily because chemistry was my most favorite subject ever, but because each day he had interesting stories or jokes that cheered everyone up in the mornings. We all have great memories from having class with Mr. Glenn. Whether it was when he made us pancakes or liquid nitrogen marshmallows, he definitely knew the real way to students' hearts was through food. Mr. Glenn was always supportive of Hallie and I's endeavors as the two-man science academic team, even if we happen to just be pretty good at guessing sometimes. And he always told us the most interesting stories at downtime in our competitions. For instance, when he told us ever so nonchalantly about the time that he had met Bill Nye. Through the two years I was able to have him as a teacher, he became a big inspiration for me. He showed me that I really could pursue anything I set my mind to in the future. By telling us about his own life experiences, he led me to realize the potential that I had. I'm incredibly grateful to have had someone just like Mr. Glenn and as influential as him as an educator. So tonight, I would like to thank him 
for always being there for me and for giving me the confidence to accomplish any goal I set my mind to. And I'd also like to thank him for all of the students that he has made an impact on through all of his years of teaching. If I could have Allison Staley and Mrs. Christina Haiduku make their way to the stage at this time. Allison is the daughter of Bill and Sandy and the sister of Zach Staley. She has a passion for oil painting and she has won several awards for her artwork, including first place in this year's Hendricks County Art Council Make an Impression Art Show. She has enjoyed playing tennis on the girls' tennis team. She has participated in several clubs, including French Club, Art Club, Conservation Club, Student Council, National Honor Society, and Key Club. She volunteers with two local churches to, suit, to serve in a food pantry and a soup kitchen. Allison will be attending Indiana University, excellent choice, this fall on an academic scholarship. She will be pursuing her love of languages while majoring in international studies, Tonight, she would like to honor her French teacher, Madame Haiduku. All right, bonjour, everybody. <laughs> uh, tonight, I'd like to honor Mrs., or rather, Madame Haiduku as my most influential educator. For those of you who know me, it is obvious that Madame has helped me on my path to my job by just the subjects she teaches. French will be very important in international relations, especially considering it is one of two languages that the UN uses for its official secretariat. However, Madame has done much more for me than teach me the difference and nuances between le passé composé et l'imparfait, which Lydia and Ellen can probably tell you, we still don't quite know. <laughs> she has taught me to appreciate more fully the differences between cultures, ways of life, and experiences. For those of you who don't know, Madame is from Romania, and on top of speaking French, English, and obviously Romanian, she also speaks Italian. Four languages, like that's my dream. <laughs> she inspires me with her knowledge and her genuine love for languages and, student, and her students. And we bond over our genuine love for languages and connect, connecting with others, excuse me. She pushes me to challenge myself, but to also believe in myself and my dreams, no matter how far away they seem. When I was planning on studying abroad in the summer of 2020, she got right on board and helped me with everything, from lists of potential sponsors to scheming with me about other ways I could raise the money and get the things I need for the trip. Although I haven't been able to do that, thanks COVID, even this year, <laughs> I'm extremely grateful for her help and her readiness to help me. As well as that, she and I worked together to run the French Club, which has been a really fun role, especially this year. And, um, and her and I enjoy planning out meetings that we hope will be fun, but also educational about French culture to everybody that attends. I'm looking forward to my future and what I might do with my knowledge in French and any other languages I pick up on the way. And I know I could not have been this ready for my next step without Madame. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> I would now like to ask Rachel Sarkeen and Mr. Dwayne Hughie to come forward. Rachel is the daughter of Ray and Tammy Sarkeen. She has one sister, Sophia. Rachel enjoys training horses, competing in equestrian events, and developing service canines for police work and personal protection. She has volunteered to help children build their confidence at a martial arts school for over five years. She has been a member of the 4-H Bridal Bunch for over 10 years and has been a member of the National Honor Society since her sophomore year. Rachel plans to attend IUPUI in the fall to major in cytotechnology before pursuing medical school to become a reconstructive surgeon. Rachel is honoring her agriculture teacher, Mr. Dwayne Hughie, this evening. I chose Mr. Hughie as my most influential educator. I took intro to agriculture freshman year, and I absolutely loved his classes. Between intro to agriculture, animal science, and horticulture, 
His classes have been some of my favorites. They are among the most intriguing classes the high school has to offer. But the classes are only as great as they are because of Mr. Hughie. Mr. Hughie's classes taught me that agriculture influences us all, whether it be the food we eat or the animals we interact with, and that agriculture is a vital part of everyone's lives. I've learned things I would have never had a clue about, from the importance of soil composition to the proper way to vaccinate animals or even the way grapes are tested for sugar content. Furthermore, Mr. Hughie is also one of my only teachers who has seen my extracurricular activities. Through the Summer Ag Experience Program, Mr. Hughie visited and observed the way I trained my horses with <clears throat> and protection canines. Mr. Hughie was the first per person besides my family to see what I had achieved with my horse, which I trained entirely on my own. It meant a lot to me that he was so impressed with what I had done with my horse. He also got to observe me training my dogs, and as a fairly new canine handler, it was rewarding to showcase all I had learned. I'm so thankful to have had a teacher like Mr. Hughie, who not only taught some of my favorite subjects throughout my high school career, but also showed an interest in my extracurricular activities. Thank you so much for teaching some of my favorite classes and being a fantastic teacher. Next, we have Lydia Barber and Mrs. Kim Purdy. If you ladies could come on up to the stage, please. Lydia is the daughter of Greg and Michelle Barber. She has one brother, Adam, who is a 2019 graduate of Danville. She enjoys reading, playing the guitar, and spending time with family and friends. She is a member of Westbridge Church, where she played the guitar in the high school worship band last year. Lydia is the class of 2021 Student Council President, a member of the National Honor Society Key Club, Student Athlete, Athlete Advisory Council, and the girls basketball team. She is currently completing an internship with Donovan CPAs. Lydia plans to attend Purdue University this fall to pursue a major in accounting with the hopes of becoming a CPA. Tonight, she is recognizing her sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Kim Purdy, as her most influential educator. Many of my favorite educators are also in this room tonight, but I would like to take the time to honor my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Purdy, for her outstanding contributions to my educational experience. Many people look back on their years in middle school with dread, but I can confidently say that middle school holds many of my best memories. In Mrs. Purdy's classroom, I was never afraid to be creative and put myself out there. If I had an over-the-top idea for a project, Mrs. Purdy supported it and did everything in her power to make it happen. I can remember a time when Mrs. Purdy gave my class the simple task of writing an essay about something scary. My friends and I saw this task as much too simple, so we asked Mrs. Purdy if we could film our own scary movie instead. <laughs> she not only accepted our request, but she actually became the designated camera crew for our outrageous production. We wrote the entire script, made our own props, brought in costumes, and conducted many, many rehearsals. My friends and I laugh with embarrassment whenever we reflect on this moment. But while, while in Mrs. Purdy's class, we felt like the movie was a masterpiece. <laughs> Mrs. Purdy is someone who never lets her students feel ashamed of who they are or what their goals may be. In her classroom, creativity is the norm. She instills a sense of self-confidence in each of her students, something I've struggled with for most of my life. I would like to thank Mrs. Purdy for giving me the best sixth grade experience and teaching me how to always embrace my uniqueness. She's a one-of-a-kind teacher and person that I'm very, very lucky to know. Thank you. <laughs> if I could have Abigail Yarnell and Mrs. Jenny Quant make their way to the stage at this time, Abby is the daughter of Robin and Kathy Yarnell and has an older brother, Jacob. Abby enjoys playing travel softball, working out, and just hanging out with friends. 
She is a member of Mary Queen of Peace Catholic Church. She has done volunteered work during high school with the Shared Blessings Food Pantry. Abby is a member of the National Honor Society, the softball representative for the Student Athletic Advisory Council, and is an officer for the Business Professionals of America. Abby has played on the varsity golf team for three years and the varsity softball team for four years, and she is currently one of the captains. Abby plans to attend IU South Bend this fall and double major in accounting and business management. She will also be playing softball for the IU South Bend Titans. Tonight, she would like to honor her math teacher, Mrs. Jenny Quant, as her most influential educator. One teacher, three classes, four years, 103 weeks, 615 days, 943 assignments, and millions of words spoken have all led to me being here today, ranked number four in my graduating class and asked to pick my most influential teacher I have had over my academic career at Danville. Ms. Quant is that teacher for me. So many students will ask the question in math, when am I going to use this in my life? But maybe instead the question should be, how can I use this in my life? And when I say that, I don't mean how can I use the quadratic formula or the inverse of cosine or even the standard air equations. But instead, how can I use the problem solving skills I am learning to overcome adversity each and every day? Over my four years of high school, Ms. Quant has not only taught me how to complete a math problem, but has also taught me how to not give up, how to be confident in myself, and most importantly, she has taught me how to simply ask for help. Many teachers will say that there is no such thing as a stupid question, and maybe that is true, but I know I have tested that statement many times in Ms. Quant's class. Yet no matter how many times I ask an obscure question, Ms. Quant is always open to hear more. My freshman year, I doubled up in math, taking honors geometry and honors algebra too. Being a, in a, being a freshman in a class with all sophomores was very intimidating at times, but having a teacher I felt comfortable going to and asking questions was extremely helpful. A teacher's job goes far beyond just educating students on a subject. It is about creating good people. However, it takes a genuinely good person to create one, and Ms. Kwan is just that. She has always been a person I can go to for advice, help, or even just to tell her a story. So after those millions of words, 943 assignments, 615 days, 103 weeks, four years, and three classes, I was left to choose one influential teacher. And for me, that was without a doubt Ms. Kwan, because she has not only taught me math, but has also taught me how to be a good person in every aspect of my life. So thank you, Ms. Kwan. I would now like to ask Ellen Halfacre and Ms. Sarah Stevenson to come forward. Ellen is the daughter of Steve and Lynn Halfacre, and she has one brother, Scott. She enjoys snow skiing, reading, and traveling. She is active in her church where she sings in the church choir and assists with Vacation Bible School. She has volunteered many hours at the Shared Blessings Food Pantry and most recently at the vaccination clinic at the fairgrounds. She has been a member of the National Honor Society Spell Bowl and academic teams. In the fall, Ellen plans to attend Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee to prepare for a career in pharmacy. She is honoring her sixth grade math and science teacher, Ms. Sarah Stevenson, this evening. Tonight, she is, um, sorry, she is honoring Sarah as her most influential educator. I have met, I've had many great teachers in the past 12 years, but the most influential would have to be my sixth grade science and math teacher, Ms. Stevenson. My teachers before her recognized that I did well in class and got good grades. And got good grades. Ms. Stevenson did as well. However, she also saw the potential that I could do more. So she encouraged me and gave me opportunities to do just that. I remember one conversation with her suggesting that I skip seventh grade math and go straight into pre-algebra the next year. We talked about why she thought this would be beneficial to me for me. To be honest, I was scared because I was unsure if I would be able to handle the harder coursework. 
She helped me to feel that I would be okay. In the end, I decided to take her up on the offer, and it, and it allowed me to see that I was capable, capable of doing the higher level work. As a result, her encouragement gave me the strength to take the higher science and math courses in high school, which helped me discover my enjoyment for biology and life sciences, a topic that I will definitely be studying more in college. So tonight, I would like to honor Ms. Stevenson for believing in me and for the encouragement that she gave me to trust in myself, a lesson that I will be taking with me into my college career. So thank you. Our next student found inspiration from her most influential educator on the volleyball court. Could I have Madison Romanitz and Mrs. Marlena Stroud come forward? Maddie is the daughter of John and Kim Romanitz. Her sim siblings are Jacob, Emily, and Noah. She is active in her church youth group and she has gone on several mission trips with her church. She has played volleyball all four years of high school and in her spare time, she enjoys spending time with her friends. She again has made an excellent choice in her future studies by attending the Indiana University to study nursing and pre-med. Tonight, she will honor her volleyball coach, Mrs. Marlena Stroud. past four years, I was blessed to not only have you as a volleyball coach, but as a mentor, role model, and most importantly, friend. Through all the craziness in life, I knew I had someone aside from my family to go to if I ever needed help. Whether it was a terrible loss or amazing win, I knew my biggest support was on the sidelines cheering me on. Without your constant reassurance that I was meant for bigger and better things, my high school and especially volleyball career would not have been the same. Your belief in me as a volleyball player and person is my ultimate reason for the love of the game. All of those long days at volleyball tournaments where I was able to go close to you is what makes this speech so hard to give. One particular game that stays with me to this day is when we face Cascade. In other words, the worst game of volleyball I've ever played. After two personal foul timeouts of being targeted, I was on the edge of an emotional breakdown. Before the fourth set, you pulled me aside and said, there's a reason why you're here, and no one should make you feel like you shouldn't be. Not only did these words push me to finish the game with all the obstacles in the way, but I've been the words I live by when life gets rough. So while this speech's sole purpose is to recognize you as my most influential educator, the impact you've had on my life expands farther than my grades and GPA. So Marlena, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, and I love you. I just want to remind our uh, students and educators there's another set of stairs over there. Might make it quicker to get up here, but we're doing fine. Our next presenter is Ella Brinkley, and I would like to ask her to bring Mrs. Lacey Wooten with her up onto the stage. Ella is the daughter of Brent and Leah Brinkley and the sister to Erica. She loves playing softball and laughing with her friends. She is a member of the National Honor Society, the president of the Spanish club, and the captain of the softball team. In the fall, she will attend and play softball for the University of Illinois at Springfield and major in exercise science. Ella would, Ella would like to honor her third and fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Lacey Wooten. I would, like to, I would like to honor Ms. Lacey Wooten as my most influential educator. Ms. Wooten was my third and fourth grade teacher at Danville South Elementary. School had always been a portion of my day I could look forward to. For the most part, I was excited to go to school for the sole purpose of socializing with my peers. Ms. Wooten, however, made me excited to learn and expand my knowledge of reading and writing. It was also super cool to be able to talk with her on a more personal level about her experience at playing softball at IUPUI. I truly believe it was because of Ms. Wooten that I aspired to play softball in college, and now in the fall, I will be doing just that. I had already asked Ms. Wooten to join me on this night two or three weeks before softball tryouts, but it was one of the best surprises when I walked onto the softball field for the first day, and Ms. Wooten was standing on the field and told us that she was going to be one of our coaches. Throughout the two years I had Ms. Wooten, she had a lasting impact on me 
and reminded me that learning can be fun and enjoyed with the right mindset. She also taught me larger life lessons, like with hard work, you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. Thank you, Ms. Wooten, for not only building the foundation for my education, but also for my softball career. Thank you. All right, our final presentation this evening will be by Karen Johnson, and she will be recognizing Mrs. Jamie Young. If I could ask these two ladies to come onto the stage, please. Karen is the daughter of Kamala Johnson and Jeremy and Abby Johnson. She loves animals. Being outside, reading, crafting, and volunteering anywhere and anytime she can. She has been very active in her church and youth group and fortunate to have taken several mission trips to Jamaica and West Virginia. This year will mark her 10 year membership in 4-H. She has also been a competitive cheerleader for nine years and enjoyed playing tennis for the high school team for three years. She is a member and officer of student council, national honor society, and being a mob leader this year. Karn will be majoring in finance with a pre-law track in the fall. She is currently undecided on that college that she will be attending, but we understand that she does have it down, narrowed down to two schools. And either of them would be fortunate to have her as a student on their campus. Karn is honoring her AP Calculus and Trigonometry teacher, Mrs. Jamie Young, this evening. Um, I also turned this in three weeks late, so sorry about that. Tonight, I'd like to honor Mrs. Young as my most influential educator. Mrs. Young was my pre-cal and trig teacher, as well as my AP calculus teacher. For the past two years, I never dreaded going into Mrs. Young's classes like I did most of my other classes. I actually looked forward to going into her class each day. Math has always been my favorite subject, but when I became concussed, I hated it. Although Mrs. Young was very encouraging, she gave me extra time to complete assignments and allowed me to come in for extra help. Once we went into quarantine this last school year, I would very frequently email Mrs. Young, whether it was math related or not. I figured I was annoying her, but that's okay because I think that's probably what I do best is annoy people. But I will say she did answer all of my emails in a timely manner. It made my day when she emailed back and thanked me for turning in my work. I figured it was a common thing to turn in homework assignments on time, but apparently everyone else in the class stopped turning in assignments. I'm glad I was able to supply you with more work to do. And last thing I would like to say is thank you for answering all of my emails and questions. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for writing me many letters of recommendations. And thank you for being my favorite teacher. I like to tell myself that I'm most likely your favorite student, or at least your favorite of my siblings, even though I have never ever been picked to be student of the month. But I guess I can, give, forg I can forgive you for that. You're the best math teacher ever. Thank you. Okay. Each year, I always look forward to a few events. The first day of school, the last day of school, and tonight's event. And actually, tonight's event is at the top of the list. Tonight, students, you've done something that is often overlooked. You've taken the time to say thank you to an educator that has helped guide you along the way. You may not have any idea of how much they appreciate you taking the time to recognize them. As you move through your life, never hesitate to take a moment to let someone know how grateful you are for the effort someone makes to help you out. Before we leave tonight, I'm going to give you three pieces of advice for your adventure to college. All of these things were shared with me 33 years ago, and they were the best pieces of advice I received about going to college. Number one, don't go home unless you're commuting to college. Then it might be wise to go home. So much happens on college campuses over the weekend and you don't want to miss out. Number two, now this is a very cleaned up version of the advice that I received. 
you absolutely have to make yourself get involved with something. It will be easy to sit in your dorm room and not meet people. However, you will find yourself miserable and homesick. Stretch yourself to meet people. Your experience on campus will be so much richer. And number three, this is very important. You absolutely have to work hard on your academics from after dinner on Sunday through your last class on Friday, that is if you have class on Friday. And play equally as hard from your last class on Friday until dinner on Sunday. Extremely important. Congratulations on your accomplishments. And all of us are looking forward to seeing what great things you do throughout the rest of your life, even if you are not nominated as student of the month. <laughs> Have a great evening, everyone, and thank you for coming. Don't forget... Pictures are very important, so please make your way out to the front lobby and get your picture taken. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>